uh, very excited to uh, uh, converse with you, communicate with you through this digital medium. And this probably is is the biggest theme that that we have seen come out of uh, come out of uh, the massive digital transformation that we have seen in the past uh, several months. Uh, COVID nineteen has has been uh, has been uh, a massive disruption uh, across uh, the businesses, across the livelihoods, and across the general well being of of people across the globe. Uh, India has not been spared. So it, it has been it has been one of those events that that people will typically uh, in retrospect will say this was one of one of the events uh, that that happened and that defined at least the decade of 2020. And there have been and we all have seen and and several of us may have uh, uh, seen or heard the the effects of this uh, devastating uh, pandemic firsthand. Uh, while it has been harsh on a lot of us, and especially on people uh, who are not on this forum. A lot of us who are actually communicating through this forum should consider ourselves very, very lucky that we have a digital means to communicate and stay connected despite whatever has gone in the world in the last uh, eight odd months. Uh, but several other people don't have that, uh, don't have that privilege. So a lot of us still have, uh, have been able to be uh, uh, contributive and and uh, be able to uh, work uh, across uh, the segments of the sectors that we have been involved in uh, with the help of technology. There has been a massive section of the society that has found it to be a massive challenge and they have struggled. So at least for us, we are very, very lucky. Having said that, uh, the last uh, uh, several months have also uh, accelerated a few of the key themes that all of us have been uh, thinking of, working actively on, et cetera, for the past several years. So there's a joke uh, going around, a meme going around on the internet that who is the biggest uh, transforming agent for, or who, or who is your, who is the biggest transforming agent for your uh, digital journey uh, in the last five years? And then people check box like chief innovation officer, CTO, et cetera, and some of them do check COVID-19. While uh, circulating that as a joke, but it has also come across as a very strong theme of what has happened in the last uh, several months. Uh, from a, from a uh, digital adoption and acceleration perspective, uh, India has stood tall. Uh, we have seen several themes coming from across the country, which have validated the, the key initiatives or the key uh, transformational themes that have been pursued both by the public sector and the private sector in the last several years. Uh, we as a country have digitally built and diligently built uh, the, the requisite infrastructural layers for us to be connected, for us to be uh, valid and for us to be both economically and commercially uh, functioning uh, despite the pandemic. And, and I'll give you an example. I was, uh, if you, if you, uh, see across the globe, so most countries in the Western world are currently struggling to find the right means to identify their citizens who, who, who um, may need help and finding the fastest way to, to, for uh, the governments to reach the requisite help to its citizens. Compare and contrast this with a country like India, which has digitally built the best identification system in the world and the, and the most comprehensive one in, in the form of Aadhaar and the most comprehensive and sophisticated financial system in the world in terms of unified payments interface. If you would have looked at the statistics of UPI usage in the last several months, you would have, you would have seen that UPI statistics has been uh, breaking its own record for the past several months, started with more than a billion transactions in a month. And, and we are now seeing close to 2 billion transactions, uh, jump of two times you know, in less than four months. Uh, that has that the country has seen, uh, despite everything, despite most of us from financial services sector working from home, India's financial services sector has worked well. Uh, it has worked robustly, and and a, a lot of us should be thankful for the work that has gone uh, in by both the public sector and the private sector in in last five years in building this digital infrastructure. So identification, payment services, and payment solutions are something that have been solved. But there are several other themes that are, that needs to be thought through. One of the themes that uh, that have that uh, uh, was uh, worked and pushed upon very very uh, in a comprehensive manner, but in an accelerated manner, just before 
uh, or, or just about the time when the country started going to the lockdown was uh, on uh, digital health. So, so online health uh, bill was was uh, uh, put and it was approved by the Ministry of Health and 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 a lot of work had been done by Niti Aayog also to ensuring that in this time of difficulties, people should have access to uh, have access to digital means of of contacting a, a doctor or a specialist uh, and. And we all know that at, at, at several points in the last several months, it has been more uh, uh, safe to stay at home than, than visit a hospital. So if, if uh, and God forbid that uh, uh, everything, everything uh, stays hunky-dory uh, with you and your family, but if you do have to uh, visit a hospital, what well, the choices that we have these days is that we can dial a doctor. We can get a prescription online. We can go and uh, deliver, uh, ask for and, and get, medicines delivered online. So, so healthcare is something that has also seen a massive uh, digital push in the last several months. We have seen national digital health mission being unveiled. So, so the country uh, from uh, basic infrastructure in identification and uh, payments is now moving towards healthcare. One of the key initiatives that I was involved in uh, uh, during this uh, COVID pandemic was creating the uh, India's COVID-19 uh, mobile application, which was uh, uh, required for contact tracing and information dissemination, Aragya Setu, and and it is one of the one of the one of the most difficult yet most of the satisfying projects that I have ever worked in in, in my uh, limited career so far. For some of you who who may be uninitiated with uh, with the product, and I hope all of you are not. Most of you or all of you are using the product. Uh, we started building the product. Uh, we didn't have even have, have a concept of the product till 15th March. We had we drafted the contours and the outline of product on somewhere between 16th and 17th March 2020, and by 2nd April we had launched the product. So it took us about less than three weeks. Uh, we had a fantastic team of uh, close to 50, 60 engineers, product people, uh, data scientists, uh, epidemiologists, uh, security people, uh, and people. Uh, with functional knowledge, both from inside and outside the government. It's a fantastic uh, example of uh, a unique public-private collaboration, from uh, which uh, uh, exemplifies the best of public and the best of private sector coming together in a, in a time, uh, in, a, in difficult times, and building something that the entire country is proud of. Uh, there have been massive firsts that Arogya Setu has seen. Uh, one of the, one of, and, and if you look at, mayor statistics, which uh, you sometimes usually don't give you the full picture, but uh, if you look at just at the statistics, the, the, the user base is close to 160 million users. And if you put together all contact tracing and COVID-19 mobile apps from across the globe, the, the user base for India is, is uh, larger than all of them put together. That being uh, one thing, the second thing that the, the product has done very well is that it has been very good in identifying A, uh, where to test, and B, whom to test. So this, this combination of information on where to test and whom to test more has enabled us to look at areas where there may be a chance of uh, the, the pandemic uh, spreading faster than anticipated and take measures there. So we have been able to identify hotspots uh, at, at some post office level. So these are your uh, areas with three uh, kilometer into three kilometer uh, area, which is nine square kilometer, which is rather granular. And the way we have gone about and have done it is uh, we have taken uh, the information that we have received from people who have uh, turned positive and are on Aroge Setu combined with population level statistics, the, the general movement patterns of people, uh, how they move, how they interact, et cetera, as a population, and then predicted places where there could be uh, heightened uh, probability of, of the infection uh, spreading faster. So these have been some of the things that actually has helped uh, India. And I think uh, uh, combined with several other initiatives, Arog Situ has also played a key role in identifying and, and helping us uh, contain uh, uh, the, the spread of this pandemic uh, in, in the last uh, several months. Uh, what it also tells us and what it also has created a template of is that if the public sector and the private sector come together, people from the government and, and the best minds from uh, technology, et cetera, and which exemplifies people like yourself who are on this call, uh, come together, we can create massive uh, uh, technology solutions at scale that this country needs. I mean, uh, 
I often refer to, uh, to them as a billion plus uh, uh, scale technologies. Uh, definitely Aadhaar, uh, UPI is one of them. Uh, Aroge Setu has proven to be one of them. The National Digital Health Mission will be one of them. But there are several other key themes and areas where we need similar and maybe uh, more comprehensive technology solutions. These could be in the areas of livelihood. Uh, this could be in the area of education. Uh, most uh, uh, universities uh, and, and uh, educational institutions are currently struggling because they may not have the best digital means available for them to interact with their students. Uh, and, and in the absence of physical classes, et cetera, it's become a challenge uh, for the student and the teacher to stay connected in the, in the most uh, fruitful manner for for the, the for the delivery of uh, lectures, etc., uh, it could be uh, in the area of agriculture. It could be in other areas of financial inclusion. How do we make sure that people who are uh, who may have who may have been worse off because of the pandemic? How do we go about uh, ensuring and enabling them? And inclusion means uh, having access to uh, uh, financial services across the the financial services spectrum, not just payments. It could be credit. It could be a means to invest, it could be means to uh, secure and grow their uh, money for the future. Uh, if um, could be the areas of logistics. Uh, so we have to think of how do we go about building these massive technology solutions. And if you are uh, somebody uh, who are or who are interested in working uh, in these areas, uh, no better place or no better platform than, than India. It's one of the one of the largest contiguous markets. Uh, while there are idiosyncrasies and while there are several challenges that we have as a country, uh, some of the key challenges being that uh, we are extremely multicultural, multi uh, diverse uh, country that speaks uh, several languages, etc. cetera. Uh, but there's, there's a massive opportunity also. The country is uh, digitalizing at an extremely fast pace. The, the uptake of uh, digital means of payments is one such example. We have a country that has probably between 500 to 600 million smartphones. Uh, but, but people, more importantly, people have, are becoming accustomed to uh, using technology on large scale. Uh, we often refer when we are uh, working on products and we often joke that India runs on WhatsApp. What that, what that also means is that if you start building solutions that are as simple as and as intuitive to use as WhatsApp, then you probably will have success. That has been a mantra that at least a few of us have been pursuing in building these large scale solutions, build solutions that is both for um, India and Bharat that works and talks to the 500 million smartphone users, but try to see if we can extend that to uh, feature phone users, uh, other types of users through other solutions for, for example, uh, having IVR a solution, which is as rich and as comprehensive as say a feature phone solution, build solutions in that, that speaks in multiple languages. And this has to be a two directional uh, conversation. Uh, not just a download of information. So, for example, a, a solution that works well in, that connects people from, say, uh, Bengal to Karnataka should be able to uh, work irrespective of, of people's uh, knowledge of either Bengali or Kannada. So build, for, build in vernacular uh, so that uh, the language should not be a handicap. Uh, access of information should not be a handicap. Uh, but uh, your sophistication level in terms of using a mobile particular technology shouldn't be a handicap for the user. And more importantly, things like if, if you can read but cannot write, if you can neither read or write, these also should not be eventually be a handicap. There are technology solutions that enables you to uh, make sure that uh, you can uh, overcome all these barriers and handicaps. Start building these kind of solutions and, and, and in, in, a, in a collaborative manner. And I think uh, we as a country, and, both need and there is a there's a want for uh, building these kind of massive solutions. Uh, one final theme before I uh, conclude my um, uh, uh, presentation uh, is that uh, some of the biggest themes that will come out uh, from the country in terms of technology will be in the area of uh, AI, ML, and big data. We as a country uh, consume one of the largest uh, amount of data that any country consumes uh, per person uh, across the globe. More importantly, uh, the, our access to data is probably the cheapest. It's about seven rupees per gigabyte, uh, which is probably one tenth of what it costs in countries like the US and even cheaper compared to countries like the UK. Uh, we are digitalizing, we are generating data at a very fast pace. Uh, we are an extremely data rich country. Uh, it will take a combined effort from uh, several of us who to work together and, and converting this data richness into data intelligence. We have to create, and data sets that uh, 
work for and that uh, correspond to India and India's needs. Once we start building these massive data sets that train the most sophisticated uh, AI ML models or, or power the, the analytics tools in say cancer care, in say tuberculosis, in say precision farming, uh, in, in ensuring uh, that we have the precise information on, on avoiding uh, traffic snarls, uh, making sure that we have access to uh, moving goods faster from point A to point B using multimodal means of transportation. Then we start uh, becoming a, uh, both uh, an intelligent economy that uses technology and more importantly, an efficient economy that chugs along at a faster pace. Uh, hence, that will become a very, very important lever. Uh, <laughs> the use of the newer and emerging technology means, some of which I had specialized in while, while my, at my time at PPIO, is extremely crucial and critical. It requires uh, both advances in technology, but it requires uh, uh, background and infrastructural tools, which I, I mentioned could be in the areas of uh, 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 structured data sets, which are cleaned, which are annotated, and which are available for the larger segment of the research academia and startup community to consume and access to uh, the best of talent, the best of computing resources uh, is something that, that we will definitely need as a country as we move along. Uh, India's resilience in the last several months have shown that we are moving uh, rapidly uh, and we ho all hope to defeat uh, this pandemic together in the near future. What the world will look like in post COVID-19 will be completely different from what we have seen and what we were used to in 2019. And as I mentioned in the start of my conversation, that this is being one of the examples. A lot of us will, will feel more comfortable getting connected through digital means that, that were before. And I'm sure everybody has a story of their grandmother, et cetera, who, whom they have started conversing with for the first time through a WhatsApp video or a Zoom call, et cetera. So the so world is changing. People are uh, adopting technology and adapting uh, very fast to the newer, newer technology paradigms. Uh, it's upon us to uh, make sure that the way we leverage the new technologies uh, solutions and build uh, uh, an India which is uh, inclusive, or build an India which is efficient in all its uh, uh, means of transactions and, and doing business, and an India which is uh, inclusive for everybody, not just the, the digital uh, natives, but everybody who may or may not at this point in time have equal access to uh, digital means, but eventually uh, maybe some of the biggest chain makers that this country will see in terms of both consumption and asking for technology solutions that that uh, helps uh, a lot of us rethink on the mediums of or the form factors or the or the kind of solutions that we want to uh, build and curate for a country as massive, as diverse, and as uh, rich as ours. Uh, with uh, with that, I will uh, conclude uh, my. Uh, presentation. Thank you very much for uh, listening to me. Um, I hope you have a, a, a very uh, rich day ahead of uh, learnings from this digital transformation summit. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe, stay home.